It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Uh, all right, this question, this is a good one, Brian. And uh, this one, uh, yeah, no, this, I, this is a good one. We'll see where this goes. This is from James. James says, uh, can you do an experience share on how you budget for giving and possibly your journey as wealth grew? My wife and I feel motivated to increase our giving while remaining intentional. And I don't know if he means intentional about giving or intentional about uh, building wealth. Uh, but how you know? How do you go about thinking about that? Now, look, because I, I do want. I'll, I'll be glad to talk about this, but I would be doing wrong in the fact that one of the bigger inspirations for me is you have done this so well. Look, I will be the first to tell you, I felt like my giving charitably. I've always been charitable, but it it increased later. Sure, you came out of the the shoot like from college on. You've always been a great charitable giver. And um, I felt somewhat inspired by you. So I, I feel like it'd be wrong for me to talk about what, how I give sure. without giving you the respect of, of you sharing first. Yeah, you know, I, uh, for those of you, you know, so my story is a little unique. I came from very, very humble beginnings. Uh, I grew up in, you know, pretty extreme poverty. Uh, and so when I got, you know, out of high school and into college and uh, started working, I was like, man, this is awesome. Like, I felt like, you know, you get your first, you get... You just start your first job and you get that salary, you get the first paycheck. I was like, holy cow, I'm rich. Oh, I'm rich. It's so awesome. Uh, and I just remember being so... Uh, I, I know what I paid you. You were not rich. I was rich. not rich at that point. Uh, <laughs> I just remember uh, feeling uh, so uh, so blessed and so thankful and so uh, just grateful for that. I said, man, I, I don't ever... I don't ever want to take it for granted. So one of the things that I uh, made an assessment of early on, and my wife uh, made the same assessment, and we allow our faith to dictate this, uh, is that we wanted to be generous. No, no matter what stage of life we're in, no matter if we're incredibly successful or incredibly unsuccessful, we always wanted to be generous givers. And so as part of our budgetary thing, for us, that was always step one. We'd always give first, and then we would pay ourselves first, and then we would figure out spending. And that's kind of how we budgeted. And we sort of did that all through life. Well, again, as life has gone well, as we've had some success and the firm has grown, what I recognized is that while I was always like, doing it. I was always giving and supporting causes that we care about and donating, that sort of stuff. Uh, it kind of beca- uh, it kind of became, um, I don't know, I don't know if familiar is the right word. I, and I feel like that's kind of, James, what you're asking about is, you know, how do you, you know, as you grow, as your wealth builds, how do you think about that? One of the commitments that me made, we made is we always wanted to feel a little uncomfortable. We always want to give to a place where it feels like, you know, it's a little bit of a stretch. It's a little bit of something uh, because that's something that mattered to us because we always want to be so grateful and so happy about all the things that we have that if we're willing to kind of hold on to it loosely and kind of, you know, help others who have not had the same opportunity, have not been in the same place and not been able to do the same thing, we always want to be in a place where we can do that. Now, what I love is as opportunities present themselves, now we can think about ways to give really, really efficiently using charitable gift funds and gifting appreciated securities. And so the way in which we give has matured just as our financial circumstances matured. And I think that's what's awesome about even in the ways that you do the things you did you know, 20 years ago when you started your career, you can do those same things now, but you can do them better and more efficient and to a different extent. That's kind of how we've approached it and thought about it. Um, I always think that giving is such an important part of success is because I think about all the, the, the great movies out there with the villain wealthy person. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that's, that's yep. what society pushes out there is the the, the son of a gun that is, uh, you know, got money and then not not paying it the forward. Scrooge, yeah. The Scrooge, you know, the, we could go through. There's a lot of others. I will tell you that I think wealth is one of those things that you need to make sure you are creating structure so that you, you don't get caught up in your own success. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to be a generous person. Yep. Person and um, I have found from my own giving sh- strategy that the more I have let go of capturing my essence off of what I have and more into what I can give is. By the way, abundance is is uh, you would think it would get smaller, but somehow the success continues to grow mm-hmm. by giving more and more and more. It's the it's the most counter contrary thing, but I think it's also because your spirit instead of turning dark towards the success and and how great you are 
it kind of lets you stay focused on what the why is and that this is just a tool that you're using to create success. That's right. It's not the center of the universe of why you have success, which is the number sometimes I think people get caught up in. Now, I will tell you a way I do it, and this is a little different than Bo in the fact that I've tried to respect and the fact that I want to give and I want to give a, 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 a percentage of my income, but my income is all over the place, sure. you know, because we own so, you know several businesses. It's not like I can just get a salary and I get, that comes in. So what I have done is I've created um, uh, is essentially whatever my income tax return was for last year, I multiply that number for all income sources by that that number, and then that's the goal I have for the coming yep, year. Love it. And I and every month at the end of the month, first fruits type style, I I give to my charitable giving fund from my appreciated holdings because I have a joint investment account. And then realize I've told you guys this is where it's really cool financial mutant style. I'm buying also every month into that same investment. So I over time, I'm not only fulfilling my charitable obligations or desires, but I'm also raising the basis um, in that account. So where if I ever needed a liquidity event or needed to get access to it, it's all working yep. together. And the best thing that facilitates that is that charitable gift fund. Mm-hmm. I use Fidelity. Um, they don't. Uh, they don't have a minimum on um, setting those accounts yep. up anymore. Y'all, y'all corrected me last time that I think I said it was twenty five hundred. It's actually there's no there's minimum. No minimum now. Um, so th- these things are very easy to structure a giving strategy like this. And and I know that this probably goes beyond because it's more of a spiritual thing. But I will tell you the saying: it is better to give than to receive. Generosity and the abundance cycle has yet to fail me in all my years of doing this. And you've been a great example. I've followed your lead, and it's, and it's, it's been an, a, an incredible journey.